can't come in, Mr. Deacon. I'm not decent. Do you want me to shut through the door so all the other tenants hear? Forgive the mess. I haven't had a minute all day. Where is it? Well, I had hoped. I'm telling you, if I don't get it, Tuesday, you're out. You, Two weeks, you owe. Are you threatening me? Telling you, and there are plenty of ways I can get you out. My dear man. Now, look, Mrs. Atkins. But, but, Mr. Deacon, aren't you forgetting the fire escape? Of course, it doesn't affect me down here, but I do pass the housing authorities whenever I go to the post office. I could pop in, remind them you were meant to have it installed last March at the latest. It's criminal to put your tenants at risk. You old witch! Another double gin. Got her birthday. She'll think I'm dead. Dearest Nell, doesn't time fly? Yeah? May I speak to Mrs. Emma Atkins, please? Oh, no. What? I'll have to go down. Hang on. <laughs> Funny. Emma said it was a private hotel in its own grounds. Mrs. Atkins? Oh, perhaps he's the caretaker. 75, 22, 34, electricity 62. She's on her way. Oh, thank you. 159 pounds 34. Oh. Phone for me. What a surprise. Hello. Emma? Nell. Nell Bridges. Nell. I'm so sorry. What must you have thought for getting your birthday? Thank goodness you put your new telephone number in your letter. Anyway, many, many happy returns, dear Emma. And how are you? Oh, I'm fine, dear. Flourishing. That's marvellous. Because... I've been thinking, Emma. I've had an idea. I, I can't explain on the telephone, but look, why don't you come down for the weekend next Saturday? Weekend? I'd love to, Nell. What idea? Oh, um, just a thought. Oh, 
you, you haven't changed a bit. No, you... Oh, it's incredible, really. I know. How many years? Oh, we mustn't count. I was never any good at sums. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, it is it, rather loud. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I decided to leave London anyway, dear, even before you phoned. <laughs> Don't think I'm jumping the gun, dear. I'm not, not a bit, no. But when you said, why not come down for the weekend and have a look round, I thought, well... I can always find somewhere near to darling Nell, my dearest old school chum. Stay till Tuesday. Of course. I mean, you don't feel bulldozed, do you? You mustn't. I'd hate you to. <laughs> no, of course. you are. I hope to die. Do you remember how we've always saying that? Well, we... Yes, all the time. <laughs> Look, some of my early drafts are up already. You always adored flowers, didn't you? doesn't suit us to share your lovely home. And after all, it may not, dear. No strings attached. I don't think either of us should feel bound either way, do you? Yet. The fact is, the older one gets, the more one treasures one's privacy, don't you find? No, oh, quite. I wouldn't intrude at all, dear. Elder Flower. Elder Berry. And as you said, it is quite self-contained, isn't it, up there? Oh, yes. But I thought you liked your private hotel. Oh, I did. But then again, a, I mean, a hotel isn't a home, is it? No, but... What were you thinking of charging? Well, it, you may not like it. I mean, it's very different from London down here. Oh, I'm sure I shall. One grows out of big cities, I find. We look. May we? I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, really, silly me. Don't you speak too much. Bedroom and bathroom is through here. No, don't show me. Don't show you? I knew, I knew it. <sighs> too tantalising, dear. I, I know I can't afford it. It is quite self-contained. I mean, you could let this for at least twenty-five pounds a week. I, I couldn't run to that. Let's go down. But twenty-five pounds must be less than a hotel. Oh, it is, but that's why I must draw my horns in, Nell. I've been rather extravagant since Henry died. Oh, dear. What a pity. <laughs> I might run to 18 pounds. But 20 is basic, really, Emma. I mean, the rates alone. Perhaps I could get some babysitting locally. Oh, perhaps. No, do say, Nell. I mean, I'll understand. If you don't want me. No, no, dear, it isn't that. No, just horrid, horrid money. The fact is, you're out of my range now, Nell. Well, I suppose 18 pounds would help. of a stranger. No, no. You must be realistic. You won't know I'm here, Nell. I promise. <laughs> well, I think I could babysit Mr. Brown, but it depends on Nell. I don't drive, you see. I'll run you back. You'll run me back if I can find my way to you. Oh, she's at work. I'll ring her, then ring you. Bye. 
I'm sorry, Emma. We must talk about it later. I have to finish these accounts. But I must telephone Mr. Brown. He needs to know if I can babysit tonight. I'm sorry. I can't talk about it now. borrowed my cheese. I had six ounces of cheddar. Did I? Oh, yes. Sorry, dear. I meant to say I hadn't a thing for lunch. You haven't had your sherry? No. I put it out specially, dear, knowing you'd be tired. You can't manage this week, either. Hmm? You put out my sherry for me last week, Emma, when you couldn't pay me the rent. It's getting to be a bit of a habit. That's been Mr. Brown. No, Bridges, yes. It's Mr. Brown. May I speak to Mrs. Atkins? Hold on. You were right. It's about the babysitting. He'll run me back. But I said... I'd run you there? Yes. Well, I'd earn five pounds, dear. All for you. Hello. You there? Hello. Yes. Yes. Look, if you want Mrs. Atkins to babysit, you can pick her up yourself. I'm not running anybody anywhere. No. What will he think? He can think what he likes. It's too bad, Emma. First the cheese, then no rent. Now this. Is that you, Mr. Brown? Hello? You shouldn't have knocked there. Up here. I'll just switch the light off. I'm Mr. Brown. Oh, you've come for Emma. She's up there. No, I'm not. I'm here. Don't you bother, Nell. You go on in. Oh, steady now. A bit shaky. <laughs> More haste, less speed. Don't wait up, Nell. Quite a landlady you've got. Oh, she's lovely, really. I don't think of her as my landlady. We were bosom friends at school. I know I owe you six weeks in all, dear, but I told you I have a little savings account with the Building Society, and I'll go there on Monday and get some money out. Henry said I should never break into my own capital, but... I've written you a letter, Emma. Written to me? Why did you write? I'm afraid I've had to give you notice to leave. Notice? But you're my oldest friend. I've told you I shall take some money out of my savings. Look, if you do have to give Mr. Brown my sherry, you might at least bring back the glasses. I went upstairs today to fetch them, and I found your savings book lying on the table beside them, stamped, account cancelled. They made a mistake. Are you sure? Or was it you who made the mistake? Then I kept on dipping, you know, I had to. And then they closed it. Oh, no. What must you think of me? Are you so badly off? I've no one else to turn to. Please, no. Give me one more chance.
my dearest. It's the last straw, Emma. I'm sorry, it's all been a terrible mistake. I ought to have known I valued my privacy. It wouldn't be so bad if you could pay your way. I do my best. You take my food. You pull up my mouth so that they won't increase next year. You owe me six weeks' rent. Do you realize or do you? I don't believe you do. It's sorry, Emma, but it's got to stop. I don't like saying it, but it has. Are you evicting me, dear? I am asking you as a civilized person to go, that's all. Throwing my things into the street. It isn't a street, it's a garden. No, this isn't like you, Nell. It really isn't. It is. It's how I feel. No, you're kind and generous. You can't try to Let me make you a cup of tea. And we'll talk it over sensibly. And if we decide I'm to go, I shall go. Nicely. Not like this, not in the heat of the moment. After all, you asked me to stay. I did warn you it might be too much for me. I knew, as a matter of fact, that once I agreed to stay, the onus would be on you. The law being what it is, the rent act, the rights of tenants. <laughs> I mean, you just can't throw your tenants out into the street. Tenants and rights, you're quoting the law. <laughs> I don't really understand about these things, but Mr. Brown does perfectly. Mrs. Atkins! Coming! Oh, are you all right, Mrs. Atkins? Get that fixed. All right. For you, dear, my earnings. I know it isn't much, but well, there you are. The widow's might. Nell, I've been thinking. I know I can't contribute as I should, but suppose, only suppose, dear, I were to move down here into your storage room. Then we could let my top part and share the proceeds. In return, I'd be sort of, well, you know, your housekeeper, really. And that'd give us both a bit more income, wouldn't it? and you wouldn't have to do the horrid washing up. Oh, and there's another thing. That staircase. It really is rather dangerous, you know. Mr. Brown says... Good night, Emma. Sorry. Yes, I expect you've got one of your headaches. They started in junior school, I remember. Good night. Such a horrid night. Telephone for me at this time of night. Hurry up, long distance. Gosh! Ooh! Ah! Well, we don't think she'll walk again. Really? Wheelchair, possibly. After a long time in bed, of course. Quite.
Mrs. Atkins. Mrs. Atkins has a visitor for you. Mrs. Atkins. Studies, yes. Miss Bridges. Speaking. Oh, this is the Mayday Hospital. Mrs. Atkins asked us to call you. As her only living relative, she would like you to visit her. Relative? I'm not a relative. She keeps asking for you. Oh. Very well. Y yes. I'll tell. Here she is, Mrs. Atkins. No, oh, dear. Emma? I expected you were here every day when I was unconscious. Three weeks. The bills are enormous. I don't know what we're going to do. Bills? But this is national health. No, this is a private ward. My first treatment was free, but not now, not here. That's why I needed to see you. Surely you're entitled to free treatment under the National Health Service. No, Mr. Brown insisted I be treated in a private ward. He said it was the least I deserved. He's very legal-minded. Is he? Then it'll be up to him to pay. No, apparently not. He says that as my landlady, you should have had those stairs made safe, you see, and it's up to your house insurance to pay. Accidents to third parties. He thinks it's a clear-cut case. I haven't got third-party insurance, Emma, so it won't work. Now, that's what I thought. I said to Mr. Brown I didn't think you had that sort of insurance. It's going to take about a year to put me right. You mustn't worry. What I do is sue you, dear. Nothing personal, Nell. Just a legal thing to get the money. You do see. Sue me? Oh, don't be absurd. What can you mean? You know, it's quite normal in such cases, he says. But I've nothing, do you hear? Nothing. But of course you've got something, Nell, dear. Well, you just try, you just try. You've got it for a start. There's no mortgage on that, is there? And your car? And your annuity for when you retire? I won't listen to you. But you must. It's only fair. You must help. Or else look after me for the rest of my life. One or the other. Because you knew those stairs were dangerous, didn't you? Didn't you, Nell? In fact, I've sometimes wondered if you didn't help them along a little. And push. Not aloud. I haven't wondered it aloud. I could. I shan't. It's just one of those nasty little thoughts I sometimes get when I'm alone. No. None of that matters. Not even the insurance. Horrid. No. Just so long as you look after me. We'll be together, Mel. For always. Bosom friends sharing our every secret. Oh, no. No. You mean yes, dear? Yes. 